Hello and welcome once again and welcome to our lesson for today. Today I'll be talking about databases. Databases is actually a very interesting topic considering that data and information is being utilized across all systems all over the world. So for today we're going to learn a little bit on databases. There are two parts. I'll, I'll talk first on the terminology mostly and then we'll go deeper uh, later on. So for today, we'll cover a little bit on the history and some definitions and the structure of databases, the purpose of a database, some examples of everyday life databases, some types of databases, the various database models, and we have also the relational database management system and the things that you can do with uh, RDBMS, qualities of a good database information I will also discuss that one. Let's talk about a little bit first on history. The history of databases is quite a very long history already, considering that back then there were no, it, there was no computers. It was technology was non-existent when it comes to storing uh, data electronically. So record keeping on on info or information storage back then has been a challenge throughout the human history and existed long before modern computer systems. So such as government records, the DOA decimal systems, which in fact is the very good example in terms of how data and information retrieval are are being uh, utilized and uh, retrieval and indexing more efficient and it is still required vast amounts of physical movement uh, to store the data but nevertheless it has been quite a very good example of how data and information are retrieved over time so that is something that uh, we are very proud of at least as a human being and along came the computer so if you look at the timeline a little bit on the database history if you're going to look at it if you could just imagine during the ancient times, how are they managing data during uh, back then? So elaborate data sy database systems were developed by government offices, private offices, and business organizations. Some of the basic principles of those systems back then are still being used today. If you could just imagine ancient Egyptians and all other early civilizations they were able to retain data basically but of course uh, they're on mo mostly on paper of course so during the 1960s it has been the start already of the evolution of computers so computers uh, they're already digital storage but uh, back then uh, memory is ready in kb is ready basically in very small it only in kb or kilobytes so computerized database started so this has been started by uh, an organization or a, a committee rather network model called codicil and we now have the hierarchical model called the informate ims or called the information management system so codicil is the conference or committee on data systems languages so i think they are the first group of people who who started uh thinking so they're actually the thumb, some kind of a think tank back then when it comes to the database sometime in 1970 to 72 we have a guy named ef cod proposed the use of relational database model so during this time there were two major relational database system prototypes that were created uh, the first one was ingress developed by ubc the second one is system r now these two are actually both are actually relational database systems but they have been adapted to modern database systems that we have today uh, the, the first one ingress is the one coming from or that is where the Microsoft SQL Server and other uh, popular database systems are actually based. Uh, what we have is Oracle and other popular languages as well. I mean, popular database systems are also following the second one called System R. So during this time, uh, the relational database management system was recognized. So it, it actually has been very popular since then. Then sometime in 1976, a new database model called the Entity Relationship was proposed by uh, P. Chen 
Uh, this model was made possible for designers to focus on data application instead of the logical table structure. So this has been made possible because there were instances in during the development stage that there's really need to emphasize on the data itself. I think in terms of how the data is being processed all throughout and the movement of data across the various or the entire information system. Sometime in 1980s, the SQL was born or the structured query language. The DB2 was a flagship database product for IBM also during this time. So for SQL, you will learn more about that one later on as well. What we have here is an example of the entity relationship model. So this proposed database design gives an important insight into the conceptual data models that we have today. It allows also the designer to concentrate on the use of data instead of the logical table structure. So if you can imagine this one, it is trying to relate how the data are actually pretty much related to each other. They're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to establish the relationship uh, of this data within the organization. And they normally refer employees and departments in this diagram as entities. Came the 1990s, new client tools for application development were released, and this include the Oracle Developer, Power Builder, Visual Basic, and many other tools have arised. This was also the time where Windows was actually very popular, especially Windows 95. Tools for personal productivity, ODBC, Excel. Just imagine Excel has quite uh, been there already. Prototypes also for Object Database Management System or ODBMS were also starting to come out. And during the mid-1990s, client-server database systems gained popularity, enables access to computer systems that contain legacy data. And in the 1990s, increased investment in, late 1990s rather, there has been a growing investment in online businesses and this resulted in the demand of for internet databases so during this time i think the very popular search engine was also yahoo but then later on uh, later of the 1990s uh, google was born as well so during that one during that time it really revolutionized the search capability on the internet and in 2000s, uh, we have new applications that were developed. We have PDAs. PDAs are actually your personal data assistants. This was before, should I say, smartphones that we have today. So basically, we have cell phones back then, but then cell phones is very much limited to text or call. Now, you have the capability of a smart smartphone before without the internet yet. So you have PDAs, uh, yeah, that was the thing back then. So you can able to do calendar, you know, set up your uh, meetings and so on. Uh, organizer, basically. Then you have your point of sale transactions, consolidation of vendors, and presently the three leading database companies that we have today, we have the Microsoft, IBM, and Oracle. So what we have here is basically the little bit history of the data base on the data model specifically. So just imagine that one, 1960s, we have the hierarchical, 1970 network, and then a little later, we have the relational database and object relational as well. And object database uh, models are coming out uh, before 2000s or early 2000s because object-oriented programming was already getting popular back then. Okay, so we go back now to the basic terminologies. So we'll start with database. So it's actually very easy to recall databases. So when we talk about databases, it simply means it's an organized collection of logically related data. I don't think that's really something that you would be able to forget. So examples of these databases include employee database, student database, and so on. It is structured and organized according to a particular database model. And in this case, the structural database model being used is actually relational. We'll get to know more relational later on as we progress. Computer databases are those data. Computer databases then are those data information stored in the computer. So we have the database software that is involved for this one, your DBMS software. 
And then again, a very good example for that one is your Microsoft Access, which is the most popular uh, databases that you could have installed in your machine. Here is a good example of a database uh, system that has been uh, utilized for a school. So if you're going to imagine here a sample school database with four files, we have the student, uh, structure file, schedule of classes, and student file. So in this scenario, the school database is located uh, in a computer and the sample instructor file contains four records there. And you have the specific uh, characteristics of that particular field. So this is basically how uh, data, database management systems are actually organized. And this is only specific for relational data. So you have the field size, format, input mask, and so on. So all of these things are actually very much common across different relational DBMS. In this case, what is being presented is actually uh, Microsoft Access. I hope you are not yet bored, so hopefully, please stay awake. All right, now, the purpose of a database, so as you can see, there's a lot already of databases that is existent nowadays. The main purpose of a database is really to store data to inter in order for this to provide information later on. So example, you have a database that stores customer information and another that stores product information. Now, if we combine both of these data into something like uh, an invoice, it becomes more informative. It, it gives you a, a concrete example of how the data are actually pieced together in, in order to provide a very good information. All of these can be stored using less computer space by creating indexing uh, from each database to call up the information you need into one screen format. So we get to learn on this one later on as well. There are some examples of everyday life databases. I believe you are able to experience this on your own and you are not realizing you're actually accessing it on a regular basis. Students, subject database, Businesses, tax database, the SKU, their TPS or transactional processing systems, car dealers, you have the car database, and a lot more. Even your mobile phones, wherein your contacts are there, they are considered as well as databases. All right, hello, are you still with me here? All right, let's proceed with the, uh, with the types of databases. So we have operational database, uh, analytical database. These are just one of the, should I say, uh, top, top types of databases because nowadays we have really very specific ones. Operational database, I'll just go through this one a little bit. They are the dynamic database used by organization for its day-to-day -day operation. So your transaction uh, processing system belongs to normally access this kind of databases. Your analytical database is, well, the data in, in it is actually more of a static one. They are rarely modified because they are there to track uh, history. They are stored uh, for quite a long time. An example of this one is uh, global temperatures. So as you can see, we have been recording global temperatures uh, all over the world for us to monitor global warming in certain areas over a period of time. So that is really something that has helped human history understood climate change as well. Now, what we have here is an example of a database model, or should I say structured database models. The first one is the hierarchical model. This model can be visualized as a parent-child relationship. A child can only have one parent, but a parent can have several children. Although this doesn't mean that we replicate the current relationship between a family, wherein, you know, but this is just to theoretically uh, apply the concept of parent-child relationship. It can also be visualized like an inverted tree. So your publisher here has owners and bookstore and your bookstore can have uh, deliveries and payment. The second model is a network model, although I may not be able to explain this one in a much more easier way, but I think the diagram should be able to help me. So this was developed to address uh, in part of the problem of the hierarchical model. So this allows now many inverted trees on the other hand, 
sharing branches, but, but are still part of the same database structure. So the child now is allowed to have multiple parents. This one is the relational model, which is quite popular already, which was the one I mentioned earlier, developed by EF Cod of IBM. It is here to establish the relationships between entities by means of common fields included in a file, which is called a relation. So in here, records are represented in rows and columns, and the relational database simply referred to the many tables in a database. So if you can see there, you have your publisher, authors, bookstore, books, book category, and book arrangement. We'll get to know more. Uh, you have a better understanding later on why it's called uh, relational. On the other hand, the entity relationship model is an abstract and conceptual representation of the data, which was uh, proposed by Peter Chan uh, back then. The other model is what we call the dimension model. So it's a specialized adaptation using the relational model that is used to represent data in data warehouses. Some of these models are actually still in use today. Uh, some are actually the one that is being used by Google and Facebook. I think it's called Graph, but it's a way advanced from what we have we are discussing right now. Although data warehouse here is essentially uh, the storage of all the digital data of a company or organization, and a single table of data using dimensions and measures. So we could uh, tell dimension tells where, who and what type, while the measure mean quantity. Here other database models are also being utilized today. We have the object relational model. So it is a model that utilizes the relationship model as well as the object oriented par uh, programming paradigm. So you get to know more about object oriented also later on. It attempts to bring together the database application, uh, database and application rather, uh, closer together. On the other hand, we have a concentrated model, which is more specific only on the object-oriented side. So the object DBMS uh, database functionality is much inclined to the object programming uh, languages. So it brings much more uh, than persistent storage to programming language objects. So basically, you can imagine this as, uh, well, it's a little bit deep especially we are still discussing databases and not object-oriented programming, but we should be able to get to know on those things uh, later on. The major benefit, though, of this approach is the unification of the application and the database development into a seamless data model and language environment. I forgot where I got this one, but I, I believe it was a book on database management system. I will include some of the credits later on in uh, at the end of the video or in the description. So in here, I am showing the disadvantage and advantages of various database models. So as you can see there, uh, those are the ones that are really popular that is currently being utilized nowadays. So all database assume the use of common data pool within the database. Therefore, all database models promote data sharing thus eliminating the potential problem of islands of information. So they are all adapting to some kind of um, capability we're in a little, uh, which is common across the different models. So a combination of this, the relational database management system is uh, now being uh, actively used uh, across different information systems in all over the world. RDBMS is designed to create, maintain, manipulate, modify, and delete information in a relational database. So modern databases utilizes uh, relational databases. And there are these are some of the very common things that you could do. Create database, storage, retrieval, data management, data analysis, printing, and sharing of data. One of the most important considerations when you are utilizing a database is data integrity. So in this case, I will just read through this slide. For a computer to produce correct information, the data that is entered into the database must have integrity. So when we talk about integrity, we should be able to uh, look at it as something that is correct. Okay. So the data integrity also identifies the quality of the data. Remember, when you have a database and you are making decisions based on the data that is entered, 
if the data entered is incorrect, then your decision might also be affected. An erroneous student address in a student database is an example of an incorrect data. So when we talk about database, once it contains error, it loses its integrity. So the more data, the more errors rather, the data contains, the lower its integrity. So it's very important that we consider data integrity because we and uh, we make decisions and take ac take actions based on the data that is being provided to us from an information system. Here are some of the qualities of available information. So I'm just listing them down. We don't have to go over with this one. So in order to assist you or the organization, your information must be valuable and it should be accurate, verifiable, timely, organized, accessible. It must be useful, of course, and cost effective, if, especially if the retrieval of such is a little bit uh, tedious. So basically, when we talk about accuracy, it should be error free, of course. Now, when, say, when we say verifiable, it should be proven as correct or incorrect. So we could tell re really from the source of it. Timely, it has an age actually. So the timeliness of the data provided must be considered and it's actually very important. Otherwise, the data might be useless later on. Organize, it must be arranged to suit the needs and requirements of the decision maker. Accessible is available when the decision maker needs it and useful information uh, has meaning to the person who receives it as well. And again, as I mentioned earlier, cost effective information should give more value than it costs to produce the data. We have come to an end to this introductory part on databases. And if you have questions, you can please feel free to ask or you can write them on the comments below. All right, so I'll see you in the next lecture then.